The focus of this lab is to investigate the tensile behavior of two metals, steel and aluminum. Steel is very strong and ductile. Due to its properties, steel is primarily used as a structural material in many applications such as buildings and bridges. While not as strong as steel, aluminum has a very light weight allowing it to be used in components that require strength with less weight. Some applications include engines and chassis of cars. Tension test is the fundamental material test used to determine the tensile properties of materials. These properties are needed for the design of structures. The objective of this lab is to experimentally obtain and analyze the stress-strain curves of a steel and aluminum specimen. For the test, a rectangular or circular specimen of the metal, normally termed a dog bone specimen, is subjected to a tensile force while the elongation is measured using either LVDT or strain gauge. In this case, we are using LVDT. The choice of the geometry of a dog bone ensures that failure happens in the middle portion of the specimen. The force measured during the test is converted into stress by dividing the force by the original cross-sectional area. The elongation measured during the test is converted into strain by dividing the elongation by the original length. The resulting relationship is called the engineering stress-strain curve. There are other types of stress strain curves that can be drawn. If the force during the test is divided by the actual cross sectional area, the resulting value is called the true stress. And if we use a different measure of strain called the true strain, the resulting curve is termed the true stress strain curve. Therefore, the true stress strain curve is usually higher than the engineering stress strain curve. We are now going to examine the resulting stress strain curve of steel materials. At the beginning of the test, the stress is directly proportional to the strain. The slope of the curve is called Young's modulus. The stress at the end of the straight line is called the proportional limit. Slightly higher than the proportional limit is the elastic limit, the yield stress or the yield strength which marks the end of the elastic region. In the elastic region of the curve, the specimen returns back to its original length if the load is removed. Beyond the elastic limit, the material breaks down and sustains permanent or plastic deformation. The next stage is called the yielding region in which the specimen elongates without any increase in the load. The stress in this region fluctuates between an upper yield point and a lower yield point. The behavior in this region is sometimes called perfect plastic behavior. The next stage is called the strain hardening region. The material appears to regain some of its strength back and the stress increases as the strain increases. At the end of the strain hardening region, the stress reaches its maximum value which is called the ultimate stress or ultimate strength. Up to the ultimate stress, as the specimen elongates, its cross-sectional area will decrease. The decrease is fairly uniform over the entire specimen's gauge length. Just after ultimate stress, the cross-sectional area will begin to decrease in a localized region of the specimen. As a result, a constant or neck tends to form in this region. Here, the stress-strain diagram curves downward until the specimen breaks at fracture stress. This final region is called necking region. The ductility of the material is defined as the fracture strain expressed as a percent. We are now going to examine the resulting stress strain curve of aluminum materials. Unlike steel, aluminum does not have a yielding region, which makes it difficult to define the yield stress. For aluminum stress strain diagram, the proportional limit can be obtained as the stress at which the curve is no longer linear. The slope of that portion is the Young's modulus of aluminum. The ultimate stress or ultimate strength is the maximum stress. The value of the stress that the specimen breaks is called the fracture stress. The offset method can be used to define a yield stress for aluminum. In this case, the linear portion is offset by a value of 0.2%. 
The intersection of this offset with the curve defines the yield stress or yield strength of the aluminum specimen. I hope this tutorial was helpful. Best of luck with the lab.